So a few years ago, I came up with the idea of an intervals exercise, mostly because I wanted my students to know what a perfect fourth sounded like, or be able to sing me a major third when I asked them, and also to help them improve their sight reading. Because as we all know, sight singing is terribly difficult and it's much easier when you understand what the interval you're looking at sounds like. But I thought, how, how do I teach this? This is a boring concept. So I just turned it into a little sing-songy thing based on the numbers exercise. So that's the one, one, two, one. Using the same principle, I did the major scale intervals. So there are two types of intervals. There are melodic intervals and harmonic intervals. So harmonic intervals is when you have two notes and you play them at the same time. A melodic interval is when you have two notes and you play them one after the other. So basically interval just means relationship. It describes the relationship between two notes. And as you can imagine, there are lots of different types of relationships you can have between two notes. So in a major scale, we have major intervals, we have perfect intervals and in a minor scale we have minor intervals and perfect intervals. You can also have augmented intervals and diminished intervals and many more complex things. I just nearly blew a fuse in my brain trying to think of that as we went. Okay so first things first, first part of the exercise, major second Major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, major sixth, major seven, perfect octave. perfect octave is really just a unison. It's the same note. It's C and it's C. So it is unison because it's the same. It's also an octave because it's eight notes apart and that makes it perfect, in my opinion, because it is the same note. So, from the beginning. Major second, major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, major sixth, major So as you can imagine, you go backwards as well. It's a little more evil because it's so high. This is a minor second. So this, this side of the exercise is arguable. This interval is a minor second, but we're going backwards. So we're starting with the higher note each time which is a little confusing, but the sound is still the same. So, minor second. Minor second. Minor third. It's another perfect fourth. Perfect fifth. Minor sixth. can see that the fourth and the fifth are still perfect despite it being a minor scale. Um, you can't have a major fourth or a major fifth, likewise minor. The intervals for fourths and fifths can be perfect, they can be augmented and they can be diminished. So let's start this exercise from the beginning, sing it together. I might play it in a couple of different keys so you can practice. So first, major second, major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, major sixth, major seventh, perfect octave. Now coming down. Yeah. 
Now I'll play it in a couple of different keys and I'll go down. that's my intervals exercise if you practice it over and over and over and over again you will memorize these intervals so if someone says to you hey what does a major six sound like you'll just be able to sing it because you know it and that is awesome